Hi, I'm Steve Shelburne, owner and operator of Shelburne RV here in beautiful Cleveland, Tennessee. So good morning from Shelburne RV. It's been a couple of weeks since I did my last video. Kind of getting back in the groove of things here. Sorry, it's been a, been a day or two. We actually took a week off of vacation. Went south to Florida for a week. So I enjoyed myself doing that. So just kind of getting back and getting another video done, but but uh, just to recap real quick, the uh, Fleetwood Revolution, you guys uh, saw a video we did on a couple weeks ago uh, that had all the blowout damage on it. Um, that one has actually moved on to a different uh, facility because of how severe the damage was to it. And so that's gone. Um, obviously there was pretty severe damage and then so there was some issues with the uh, drivetrain and the chassis and all the other stuff. So that's gone on to a different facility because uh, it was just more than what we felt like we wanted to deal with here. Um, so we're, we're, I'm gonna get back on to doing some more videos of some more. I've had some people say they wanted me to do more in-depth stuff, you know. It's, uh, they enjoy seeing my every day of what I got going on, but obviously want to see more of, you know, the the in-depth stuff that we work on. So I'm gonna to try to work on doing more of that, but I am gonna to continue to show you kind of the everyday stuff that we got going on. Like this Airstream that you see right behind me, uh, just got done putting an axle in that one. It's got a bunch of, bunch of work that's gotta be done on it. And then John Fish is actually working on this food trailer right here, had a uh, black tank that got drugged and broke. So we're putting a new black tank in it today. And then this one you see right here has got a uh, James just got done putting a generator in it. The generator came in and had very, very low compression and would not run correctly. Um, and we had actually ordered a new generator for it about six weeks ago because Cummins is so far behind on getting their products out to everybody because the industry is just booming at the moment, as everybody knows. So let's go around and take a quick look at what all we got going on here today and then and then we'll find a project that uh, we're working on that you guys can kind of see more in depth of what we got going on. So let me turn this camera around so we can see what's going on here. All right, so this generator right here, uh, had a carburetor issue. That's the one that came out of the one I was telling you about that's got a bad low compression. And then we had this aqua hot in here that had a tank issue and we've got it all pulled apart and uh, we'll start putting it back together Hopefully today, there's the rest of the parts for that. So we're gonna get it back going together today. So let's go out here and just take a gander at what's going on. You can see right here where James has been working on this. A little small, got a brand new gen set put in that. Got that all done. And then on this uh, hurricane, I think you guys saw on the floor slide out situation we had going on with it, where we were putting a new floor in it. And they've just about got it done. Got the new floor in the bottom of that one. It had a metal piece that was broke. So the floor was actually sagging. Got the new floor back in that one. So pretty much ready to go on it. And then we've got this little max port here that they're working on that had a water leak by the door and the floor was soft in it. So they've actually gone in here and they had to take this whole floor piece out and they've got the new vinyl in there and the threshold's about the only thing they could do it was all all damaged in right there. So and then there's John Fish working on the two dudes barbecue. Trying to get a tank put in that and then look at here. Cousin Geary. He's out there putting a refrigerator in a big horn. So got everybody working working today, but we'll uh We'll kind of get back on some of this other stuff and see what you guys see about some detailed stuff. We'll get more detailed stuff, so more later. All right, so one thing that I'm gonna show you guys here is um, the Medic five button thermostats. Now, this is, these are kind of gone by the wayside, but you still see a bunch of them. And as you can see, I've got several of them here. So these are some that I, some that I had taken in from another job that we did. So basically what I'm doing is I'm just testing the five button thermostats to verify that they do work. Now, as you can see on this first one right here, um, if you can see the dip switches right there, this one's actually set up on zone two. 
and this one's set up on zone one, which it's not even, if you look at those real closely, they're not even set. So if it doesn't have zone one set, then it's obviously in zone one because it doesn't have a set. This one here says zone two, so we should have zone one, zone two. Now, you can see I've got the 12 volt power hooked to zone two. The, the power can be set on zone one or set on zone two. The six pin plug that you see right here has um, several different wires in it. Uh, red and black, obviously your 12 volt positive, 12 volt negative. The two blue wires are for the furnace control and it doesn't matter which two wires are hooked to the furnace because when it's hooked to it and the contactor opens up on the board, uh, it allows it to flow through it, the, the voltage to flow through there and, and tell the furnace to go. The two wire, the two yellow wires are actually set up for a, um, for a, uh, a load sense. Some, some campers are set up where they have a, uh, they do that. So we don't typically ever see that differential, differential zone control stuff. Not, not very popular. Um, so anyways, so I've got these set up now. Um, yellow, uh, blue is your uh, free sensor. White would typically be your indoor ambient temperature sensor. And then red, if you had the, especially on a five button thermostat, if you had a heat pump set up on there, then you would, when you put the outdoor ambient temperature sensor on there, because there's not a dip switch for heat pump on the five button thermostats, that red once you connect that that tells the board that there is a heat pump unit on the roof and so that would tell it to turn on and do that so i've got them wired up now got the phone cables connected to that now obviously 10 button thermostat is going to be different than five button thermostat and a four button thermostat so before we do anything we've got to initialize so i've got to hold these two buttons right here the top the mode and the zone button i've got to hold them down simultaneously while turning on the switch and you'll see here in a second got an ff if everything goes good which it did you'll have a zone one and a zone two now if we had an ee then we would have a communications error between the thermostat and the control board um, keep in mind too that if we had a problem with with zone one or zone two uh, we could possibly only see zone one or zone two so if there was a communications error between zone one and zone two we might not see zone two um, if there was a problem with zone one, we may not see zone one. So kind of some troubleshooting stuff that we got to do. I've, I've got several of these boards that I've just been going through this morning, just kind of double, double checking and trying out and seeing, make sure they're, they're communicating and doing what they're doing. Now, obviously the only way I'm really going to know, I could put a meter across some of these and see once it calls for air conditioner, the relay should open up and I would have continuity check between there. Um, these are all other than these two boards here, these were newer boards and they came out of units that were working. So I pretty much know they were good, but I did have a communications problem with two of them. Um, and that's kind of the reason why I'm testing all of them. And the biggest reason I had was I had a fuse blown on two of them that was not allowing the thermostat to come on. So biggest thing is I'm just, I was just testing them on the bench to make sure everything's good. So there you go. Quick rundown on Dometic five button. Well, good morning. So got a few things we're gonna get done today. We got this uh, two bros barbecue trailer that came in. Had to put a new tank in the bottom of it. And I guess we got a problem with it not draining correctly out of the sink. So we're gonna pull that up there and take a look at that. Uh, you can see right there, cousin Gary driving the forklift. He's uh, gonna move that over here for me. And then they got that big mobile switch right there. They're putting a uh, Dometic 1350 cooling unit in this morning. So they're gonna be working on that. We'll get some video of that here in a few minutes, but we're gonna get this plumbing pulled up here this morning, take a look at it, and uh, let you guys see what's going on with that. So let me get let me get this camera turned around and we'll take a look at this. So I also had this little Pioneer travel trailer that came in this morning that we gotta tear into here in the next couple days and look at. And I'll show you what's going on here. Yeah, look like straps. Strap is broke. So I had to get into that underpinning and see what's going on there. So that ought to be fun. So there's one we got to look at. Little R pod right there. It's got a little leak in the back end of it. So we're gonna look at that here today. See what's going on with that. So 
quite a few things going on, but we'll get more into that here in a little bit. Okay, so I got this opened up. So the customer's saying when he puts water in the sink right here, it's not draining into the tank. If they pull the black water valve, um, it'll let it to flow water out of the sink. So I've got to figure out what's going on, but see, there's a drain, there's a, uh, a, a vent tube right there, and it actually looks like there might be one back there. So there's a vent um, on this line. So not sure what's going on. He plumbed all this stuff in, so we're gonna see what's going on here. But I'm gonna get some water in there and then we're gonna see what happens. Okay, so see we got water built up in that thing. Got some water built up in that thing. Definitely is holding water. So we gotta figure out why in the world that's doing what it's doing. So we're gonna dive into that just a little bit here. See if we can decide, figure out what's going on. Okay, so even though he's got this drain, this uh, vent, I took it out. Even though it's, there's so much he's done right here that that cap right there, when we drilled a hole in it, it purged all that air. So we're gonna cut that out and put one of these right here back in that place and that should resolve all that. So yeah, we'll get one of these vents right here we're gonna put that in there that should fix everything give the tank uh, able to breathe now we put a new tank in it but the way the drain right here went down into the tank somebody who had put it in last time just used like duck seal around it of course we went in there and put a nice fitting and glued it and did all that well now the tank didn't have no way to bleed air because it was bleeding air um letting air out of the tank so we fixed that problem but because of the plumbing situation that was in there that caused another problem so we're gonna fix that, we'll run the loads and get that part, and then we're gonna get back to it. All right, so I got the plumbing in the uh, food trailer, and that fixed that situation, so it is dumping out now. So that's under control. So we're gonna look at this Dutch Star. Customer's complaint was that the thermostat, five button thermostat, did not have communication from zone one to zone two. So I hear one of the air conditioners came on, so. Brandon's in here looking at this thing, so let me find this thermostat. And we're gonna take a look and see. This is right here and see what it shows up. So it's only showing zone one. Oh no, it's flashing zone two, it's right there. It's hard to see. You guys can see it or not, so flashing zone two. So we're gonna see what's going on um, and see why it's not communicating between zone one and zone two. Okay, so after, after further looking at this thermostat, even though we were showing zone one, zone two, we didn't have any control of the thermostat. So I went ahead and did a real initialization on this and I'm gonna try to do this. Let me set this camera down. Okay, hopefully you guys can see this, but I'm gonna hold mode and zone on here while turning the thermostat on and we should get an FF. We do, I let off the buttons, we're getting an EE. So EE, E, e, or I guess you guys can't see that. Let me see. Okay, so getting an EE. E. We got an FF originally. Now we're getting an EE e code. So I'm going to retest with a new thermostat, but I've actually got Brandon. This is an air conditioner that's actually bolted to the roof, so we can't get to the lower assembly where the control board's at. Um, so first thing I got to do is check my continuity between my wire, my communication wire from the thermostat to the board, which is up in the air conditioner and check to make sure the continuity is correct on that. So let's make sure the wires got this working. After that, I am gonna try a new thermostat just to check it. But if the wire's good and the thermostat's good, then we probably got a communication problem with the board. So we're gonna start there. He's getting up there now to pull that off and we'll go further. Okay, so after testing, we determined that this cable that supplies the furnace control, 12 volt power, um, and of course the phone cables to connect to here, that these cable ends have a problem. So fortunately I have another one of these plugs. We're just gonna wire it in, be, be as quick. But now that we have communications through the, through the new cable, um, everything's working correct. So Brandon's gonna go ahead and change that out and button all this up and retest and we should be good. All right, so good morning. We got this uh, big horn right here. Brandon's been working on some plumbing issues came in had all kinds of freeze damage and some other stuff so i'm gonna turn this camera around so you guys can see what's going on here so brandon's been in here working on this and this uh 
Anderson can't leak valve system has got a problem because it does leak. It says it can't leak, but it does leak. So we're gonna have to replace that. They're five weeks out on getting replacements for that. And then the bypass valve, you can see either it's here or there, but it does not in normal, that's normal halfway. So we're gonna have to change that valve out. And then he's been in here replacing a lot of these plumbing fittings and reworking all that. So he's had quite a bit going on that, trying to get that done. And then let's sneak, let's sneak over here and see what, look at there, right there, there he is. Cousin Gary, I tried to sneak up on him. But he's over here this morning working on a changing out a cooling unit in that big 1350. So trying to get that got that all done. So cooling unit was out on that, and then customer had blowout damage underneath this wheel right here. So Mr. James is under here right now trying to get this changed out. And the bracket, the bracket that goes across the frame was destroyed to the point where I made this one to go back up in there and underneath there but James has got to it's tore all that flooring out so we're rebuilding all that and got to put that bracket in there to get that done so and then they just got done putting a new Amish cooling unit in this in this uh, Norco Norco refrigerator so got that done too so been a lot of refrigerators and repair there so I'll show you some more we got going on all right, so James has got this mobile suites all finished up. Remember looking at that a few minutes ago, we had that blowout damage where we had the bar that was broke off that I fabricated, and then we put a new piece of sheet metal across the bottom of that, re-insulated it, and got it all welded up there and riveted, screwed, and painted. So that one's good to go. That's all done. So kind of see what we did there. So good morning. So this morning, uh, Lewis and I have got this Fleetwood journey that we're gonna work on this basement air going on here. Uh, we actually looked at it the other day and, uh, and kind of found out that it's been rigged a little bit. So let me turn this camera around so you can see. Okay, so we got in here on this basement air the other day. And as you can see, somebody, instead of fixing the relays up here, somebody took the extra time and wired in these automotive relays. So we've got to go in here and resolve this. And then when we were test running it a couple days ago, we found out that the air conditioner was working, but when we called for, when we called for uh, electric heat, the reversing valves were not, were not getting power applied to them. So these wires right here are, the big black wires right here are reversing valve wires. And so what we did was we unplugged those and hooked them straight up to a jumper wire, 120 volt extension cord. And then we were able to put power on those wires. And when we did, we could hear the reversing valves clicking and then the temperature was, was changing on the coil. So we know that the reversing valve was doing what it was supposed to do. So we've, we've got a relay that's burned out on this board. So this morning we're gonna change out this board. We're gonna put the correct relays back in here. Um, we went ahead and did away with the pressure switch because those can become a problem. And so basically you just, the harness is designed to just plug that back up right there and go. So we're gonna get all this changed out and then we're gonna retest this and uh, and you'll get to see what goes on there. So more in a minute. All right, so Lewis and I got this new control board put in there. See, we got the uh, new relays put in there. We did find that one of the capacitors was bad. So we went ahead and changed that. But this new style board compared to the old style board obviously is a lot different. So it's gonna resolve some of the issues we're having with the contactors. Obviously the contactors are a lot different in the new board than they are with the old one, but that should fix all that up. We have ran it for a period of about 20 minutes and we've got good temperature differential. I did look back there to make sure the ductwork wasn't wasn't broke or cracked or bleeding air or any of that, any of that thing. But yeah, it's working good now. So we're in good shape. So we're gonna move on to the next project. All right, so Lewis and I got that basement air done on the journey. Going around here to see what see what all's going on out here today. I'm gonna show you something again that's kind of amazing. I don't hardly see very much. Cousin Gary, he's been hiding from me today. But he's hiding over here doing this winterization, trying to get this trying to get this big country 
winterized, so he's been working on that. So that's always good when I can find him find him working somewhere. All right. Well, anyways, hope you guys enjoyed what we did this week. Try to get some more out this next week of some more harder projects. We've got some stuff coming up, coming down the pike that'll be fun to see. So we'll get all that done. And hopefully you guys can see some more. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you guys next week. And always remember that this video is Cousin Gary approved. Mm -hmm.